Since its unveiling in 2021, Tesla's humanoid robot Optimus has become perhaps one of the most controversial pieces of technology to take the stage in the last three years. In fact, it's so controversial that when I ran a poll here on the channel a couple months ago, almost 800 of you voted whether it was an amazing invention or whether it was junk, and the results came in at exactly 50-50. But despite how polarizing the bot is, it's undeniable that some amazing tech and care from Tesla's engineers are going into this thing. It seems like every time we get a new look at Optimus, new massive strides have been made with its development. And that was no different with today's teaser at Tesla's shareholder event. At this event, we got a new trailer for Optimus that highlighted some groundbreaking new features of the bot, as well as gave us further insight into the development of both its vision and its movement capabilities. So what we're going to do today is break down everything we learned from this new clip, as well as what we can glean about the future of Optimus from Elon's remarks. So if you're as excited about this as I am, hit that like button and the subscribe button if you're new around here, and let's get started. I'm going to let the clip play one time through in its entirety if you haven't seen it yet. It's only about 60 seconds long, and then afterwards we'll break it down scene by scene. So take a look. So as you can see, they have been busy at work cooking up a ton of these things, and I am all for it. Right off the bat, we can clearly see that they've managed to make the bots stand upright by themselves as well as walk by themselves, which isn't new. We saw this at Tesla's investor day when they had the bots building copies of themselves. But as I said before in my previous videos, this is one of the hardest things to accomplish with a humanoid robot frame. Back when Tesla first introduced the Optimus bot at their AI day in 2022, they talked about how even getting the bot to progress from standing to walking in a natural gait took months of work. And it's not just Tesla in the humanoid robot space that has had trouble perfecting walking. Here's the CEO of Boston Dynamics explaining just how hard it was for them to get the Atlas prototype to the point of having a natural gait. You're jumping forward and are falling, so how hard is it to get that right? Our first humanoid, we needed to deliver natural looking walking. You know, we took a contract uh, from the army. They wanted a robot that could uh, walk naturally. They wanted to put a suit on the robot and be able to test it in a gas environment. And so they wanted the, the, the motion to be natural. Um, and so our goal was a natural looking gait. It was really, it was surprisingly hard to get that to work. So it's really encouraging to see that they've got the art of walking upright down pat now. In this shot, we can also see that there's five total bots built, and all five look like they're in the latest version. We can also see multiple Cybertrucks in the background, and love it or hate it, these things look absolutely sharp. Now those of you with your finger on the pulse have probably seen that they've been doing a lot of road testing with the Cybertruck, and I'm hoping that the fact that we see multiple copies here means that production is still on track for later this year, and hopefully we won't have any more delays on that. Now in this next scene, we can see what appears to be a leg actuator, showing off the power as well as the motor torque control of the unit. Now this means it can essentially control the amount of force that it places downward, as well as stop it in an instant once it notices that it's applied too much. So it's interesting that they show that it won't even crack an egg, and this is something that's going to be very important for workplace safety if these bots are going to be moving around in the factory around other people. And this could also be applied to something as simple as not over tightening a screw. Elon actually made it a point to emphasize later in the shareholder event that all actuators and parts were constructed in-house, and that they weren't able to outsource suitable parts for Optimus. They also highlighted just how strong these actuators are in their last AI day, where they showed one of them actually lifting a piano. 
So if you watch Tesla's AI Day 2, they went deep on the mechanics and functions that allow Optimus to use its machine vision to navigate its environment, and it's perhaps the most important feature of the bot. As has been highlighted before, the bot uses the same computer vision that's present in Tesla's full self-driving software, and is equipped with volumetric sensing and the ability to detect edges and surfaces. But that's all been shown before. What's really novel here is the fact that Optimus is now able to see as well as memorize what it's seen within its environment. And considering that these are going to be general purpose bots, being able to memorize the layout of a factory is going to be key in their actual utility. Next, we get a really cool shot of this engineer actually training the bot's AI on different human movements. And this is the part that really gets me excited. I'd be super interested to see them expand on all the mechanics of the bot's neural networks and hear how these actions are being stored as well as built off of. Now considering that these things are going to be general purpose bots, I assume they're building out a system that can decide its own movements and come up with its own course of actions to solve a task. Now for some insight into what we're seeing here, Julian Ibars posted on Twitter, Optimus performed its first end-to-end -end learned successful grasp today. This was learned from human demonstrations. No task-specific programming was done. This means that we can now scale quickly to many other tasks. So super cool to watch and I'm excited to see how they scale this up to the bots actually learning how to do something like build a car or other factory tasks. Now hopefully we get another AI day or something similar that goes more in depth on this because I would be super interested to kind of get a look at the architecture being built here as well as exactly what kind of AI systems they're deploying in these things. I think it'd be super interesting. For example, we still don't know what the actual interface between the bots and people is going to look like. But in the Q&A portion of the shareholder event, one person asked Elon if they'd be open to doing a podcast on the Optimus robot. And Elon did say that they would look into potentially doing something like that at the end of earnings calls, or in some other fashion. So definitely keep your fingers crossed for this. But moving on, take a look at the hands. It's crazy to me just how detailed all these limbs on these bots are, and just how intricate all of this engineering is. Now to finish off the teaser, we see the same five robots all walking towards the camera, as well as three absolutely beautiful cyber trucks in the background there. But man, this clip gets me absolutely hyped to see where the Tesla team goes from here. It seems like the progress on Optimus is just continuously ramping up, and it becomes more of a capable machine with every new teaser they release. After the trailer, Elon had some various remarks to share with the audience, specifically about Optimus, and I want you to listen to just a couple because they're extremely profound and really make you question just what exactly he believes is possible with this technology. So take a listen. For uh, full self-driving, as full self-driving gets uh, closer and closer to generalized real-world AI, that same uh, software is transferable to uh, a humanoid robot. Um, just like, um, you, know, uh, we, you know, humans can obviously walk around with their arms and legs, uh, but, but we can drive a car, fly a plane, uh, steer a boat, uh, ride a horse. Um, if you have a generalized understanding, of, of, if you have generalized real-world AI, which is what we are developing for full self-driving, um, it can be transferred to basically anything. The, the Optimus stuff is... is um, I think somewhat, not somewhat, extremely underrated. Because they, people just cannot comprehend the, 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 the consequences. Now, obviously, we need to make sure that we don't have a Terminator scenario. That's very important. Uh, it's all fun and games until Terminator shows up. Um, uh, what would be the effective ratio of humanoid robots to humans? Because I think basically everyone would want one. And, and maybe people would want more than one, which means the actual demand for, for something like Optimus, if it really works, um, which it will, uh, is, uh, I, I don't know, I mean, 10 billion units? It's, it's, it's some crazy number. Um, it might be 20 billion units. If, if the ratio is, say, two to one on people, you know, to humanoid robots versus people, it, it, it might actually be, it, 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 it's, not, it's some very big number is what I'm saying. Um, and a, a number vastly in excess of the number of cars. So my prediction is that uh, Tesla's long-term value uh, will be, a majority of long-term value will be Optimus. Um, and, and that prediction I'm very confident of. 
As Elon said there, the implications of Tesla's Optimus program are severely underrated. Once this technology fully matures, it may very well change the entire fabric of society. And given the rate of advancement that we're seeing here with each new appearance of the bot, that dramatic societal shift may not be near as far off as you think. Between the advancement of AI like ChatGPT and other technologies like what we see here with Optimus, we are certainly living in exciting times. And I for one am enjoying watching it all unfold. But that's going to do it for the video today guys. If you enjoyed make sure to hit the like button as well as subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on everything that's unfolding with the technological singularity that we're currently living through. And with all of that I will catch you in the next one.